Hello, welcome to The Footprint. We are here again to walk through a certain part of history. Walk through the life of a noble gentleman, a fine military uh, man, a soldier at heart, a soldier indeed. We want to see how he made it, how he even got into it, and his, um, some of his um, um, encounters, coup d'etats here, coup d'etats everywhere. The man is an embodiment of coup d'etats. And you've been hearing the promo today. Please, I urge you to join us as we experience. Take a walk through the life of this military man. Born in Tegbe, a mile from Keta in the Gold Coast, retired Captain Joel Sou spent his early days in Lome and then in Accra. He joined the military and started working in the logistics department where he worked closely with former military ruler Major General E.K. Kotoka, who at the time was a lieutenant colonel. He played a key role in the coup d'etat that toppled in Krumah in 1966. Later in 1967, he foiled an attempted coup d'etat against General Joseph Arthur Ankara, who was the head of state at the time. Retired Captain Joel Sowu will tell the rest of his story on Footprints now. Captain, good to have you. Yes. It's been a while. It is, it is. Uh, uh, you, 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 where, where have you been hiding? Uh, because I'm a pensioner. You people, you <laughs> but, don't but, want to deal with pensioners. But, but you've been on pension for, for almost half a, half, half a century. century. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm the senior pensioner. <laughs> senior pensioner, senior I pensioner. like that. Senior How old are you now? Uh, I was 80 last year, 24th December. Wow. Yes, and uh, it's, it's called G-R-A-C-E. The Grace. Grace. Captain, thank yes. you very much for making time for us this morning. Yes. And, um, oh, well. The gratitude is mine. It's, it, we, we've heard too many stories about Captain Joel Su. Um, who is Joel Su? Where were you born? Who, 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 because you used to talk about Tudu and some yes. other places. Yes. I, I, I'm confused. All right. I was already having a name. Mensa in my mother's womb because I was the third son of my parents. Mm. And then I arrived on a Saturday, Kwame, Trade and Pong, Kwame. Mm -hmm. And then it was 24th December when everybody was, they were preparing for Christmas. And my mother was in labor and she had a very difficult birth. Mm. So when I finally landed, then my grandmother exclaimed, Mauli, Emmanuel. So three names, just by arriving, I had three names already. <laughs> in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy oh, Spirit. <laughs> and then when I went to, you know, when they were going to christen me, they didn't find any other name but a name of a prophet, Joel. Mm -hmm. So they gave me Joel. Joel. And then I went into the army, and I said, the only rank that I, I admired and I liked was captain. Mm -hmm. And that if I joined the army, ever joined the army, when I reached the rank of captain, I would leave. So I left when I became a captain. So my full so where name were you is born? Where? 24th December where? Where? 1938. Where? Well, in Tegbi. Tegbi. In Tegbi. Tegbi. Uh, a one mile from Kita. Okay. okay that's and my holy village. And you started your early education where? But my early education, you know, my grandmother was in Lome. So my father was then at Nsuom. So they, I went to Lome and spent my early days with, uh, with my grandmother. And this was around about the 38 up to 19, about 45 or so. Mm -hmm. Then my father came for me mm -hmm. and we came to Accra. So you, 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 you started yes. basic education speaking yes. French? French. Uh, Do you still speak French? Oh, well, enough to go to the market and buy something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we came and we lived at a place called Ayalulu. In Accra? Yes, uh, near Arena, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we stayed there for some time, then we moved to uh, Lawson, Agbadu, Agbadu Line, Adedinko. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, in 1948. Because then, at the time, Agbadu was a big name. Yes, uh, he was Mill's father. And then he was Mill's father. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, so the, 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 his house, that house was not very far from where we lived. 
And so, so this is the Kolibu to Accra road. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So you were by the main road? Cause yes. It, it, was, it was a big road at big, the time. At that time. Yeah. And uh, so there was the looting in 1948. Mm -hmm. And the looting uh, where Chandirams, uh, Chalarams and Co. were burning. Accra was burning. So Chandirams, Chandirams uh, Chalarams yeah. were Indian-owned Indian, yes. um, large the, supermarket. And right, I say large. Right, yes. Because um, those back they, 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 they were there, they were there, <laughs> yeah, the in and uh, and then glamour, glamour, right? yes, and uh, AG Leventis, Leventis, and yes. those were, mm. the, and we used to have the bus Amete, you know, uh, the, the 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 front was flat, flat so we yes. call it Amete, uh -huh. and then King Kong yeah. buses, those mm -hmm. were the days, mm -hmm. and then we had 1948 coup, uh, 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 looting, looting, yeah, the and then the the the, the soldiers went to the castle. Uh, where Emery shot one of them. That led to the 48 shootings, if you yeah, remember. Yeah, the crossroad shootings. The crossroad the shootings. Christian and, Bog. Yes. Mm. So they looted the stores. And so where this we is um, Sergeant Emery. Sergeant Emery. Right. And then, so we had, what in those, we had public toilets. All you needed to do was to take your bucket, your sponge and everything. You went to the public place and you had your bath. You went to the, you know, the, the, and had your bath and everything and came home. So after the looting, they sent soldiers and policemen to search houses. And people said they didn't want them to be, you know, caught in the web. So they came and dumped most of the things in the public, in public, the public bathroom. bathrooms, wow. you know. So we would go there and some yeah. people started smoking <laughs> and all that. Okay, so secondary education. Yes. And then I finished and I was in Odogono Secondary School. Osa. Osa. The great Osa. Odogono. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to Form 1 and then somehow the, the, the first term or second term, they said, well, I, I have to go to Form 2. So they sent me to Form 2. No, you are too good. I, I don't know. I don't no, know. You are too good for your I, own good. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> so then I, 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 I was in Form 2 and then I was doing boxing. You can see. This is what happened. And then my trainer so was... So somebody gave allowed, you yes. a blow yeah. that dislocated yeah. your tooth. Yeah, up to now. And removed it from the front <laughs> to the back. <laughs> and my trainer was Alassan Brahma, who was the amateur boxing, boxing. middleweight champion. That's correct. And we were in center boy, community center boys club. Mm -hmm. and Which is at Accra. At Accra. Yeah. And then <laughs> we had a tournament. Oh, by this time we had moved to Tudu. Okay. We had moved to Tudu, okay. and the, the the we were we were having a tournament with Koforidua uh, community as uh, something CYO Koforidua CYO club, which is which is uh, a boxing a tournament. A boxing tournament. So that's a Catholic youth organization at right. the time. And my my name was Teddy Tenants. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and that day, from it was uh, Dove's clubhouse in Tudu. You remember there used to be a clubhouse in Tudu for Lebanon. Oh, Lebanon, Lebanon clubhouse. Club. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And it was not far from our house. Mm -hmm. You know the Baxmatis Yeah, the Baxmatis. And I, the Raleigh Secondary School was there and we're just around there. Mm. Mm. So I remember the Baxmatis, yes. how the story building. Right. Where, yeah. We were behind that. Good. And they beat me that day. Oh, you mean you were defeated? Oh, master. The blows. I thought I was fighting about six people. <laughs> You mean you are giving torrential blows? Charlie, at them. <laughs> and blood was oozing all over the place. And, and nobody so, was stopping. Somebody ran to my <laughs> to our house <laughs> and to my father said, Mr. So I go be like Hey So so my father, you know, I, I, my father sat up and waited for me. And I didn't know he was hiding and waiting. When I came, I was tiptoeing and I had my own. So he waited until I opened the, 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 the door. door and I was going to it and I said, Joel! And I froze. Uh -huh. And when I went, he looked at me and said, is this what you want to do? I didn't answer. He said, go to bed. Within three months, he went and bought a stamp, put it at my back, put him in a, a vehicle, Straight to Kita Zion College, <laughs> so that if you they can live do, in Accra. go and do go and do the the boxing. Oh, so you then in moved Zion. from then Osa to, to um, Zion, Zion College, College. Yeah. and this is where you completed yes, your secondary completed, education. Yeah, completed, <laughs> when when I came out, 
There was the, you know, from um, uh, uh, ministries. Min yeah. You see Accountant General. Yeah. After Accountant General, you see Auditor General. Mm -hmm. So when I saw Auditor General, I, I just said to myself, I'm going to work here. And I walked to see the day. In those days, they had a day watchman. And I asked the man, I want to see the, the Auditor General. He said, what do you want him for? I said, I want to come and work here. He said, you write application? I said, no. He said, you crazy? <laughs> I said, why? I want to see the man. Okay, go. He did for the talk. So I went, saw Mr. Sabine. I showed him my results. He just shoved it aside. He said, what games were you playing in school? He said, I was playing... You didn't mention boxing? No, I didn't. I was still boxing in school. <laughs> so I said, I was doing high jump. I was the third seed in table tennis, and I was the goalkeeper. He said, oh, is that so? Then he said, okay. He pressed what we call the intercom in those days. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. said, Mr. Parks, there is a young man here who wants to work with us. Would you interview him? So this is a white man? This is a white man. Mm -hmm. So he said, go downstairs, first floor, ask for Mr. Parks. I got to Mr. Parks. I showed him the thing. He put it aside. He said, what games were you playing in school? This time I mentioned football first. I said, which position? Goalkeeper. Oh, I was also a hockey goalkeeper. And we started discussing techniques of goalkeeping. goalkeeping. No, knowing that was the interview. Then he said, when do you want to start? I said, tomorrow. I said, but tomorrow is Friday. Come on, Monday. <laughs> Monday, I went. They gave me a table. sent me to accounts department to work. I worked for about three weeks. Then they brought me paper. I said, I should write application. <laughs> and I was the first person. Then they gave me to audit crown agents and uh, embassies accounts. And then I remember I queried K. Bidima. He was then the uh, minister for finance. They went, he had an empress, and he didn't retire the empress. And you, small boy, you started querying people. They, they nearly chopped my head off. <laughs> when they saw, in those days, you had what they call the float file. Yeah. So whatever anybody wrote, you know, it, yes, it was. Yes, yeah. They nearly chopped my head off. So I said, no, but he, 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 the man has not retired. And the man wrote back and retired the what, empress. What was uh, Bidema's position at he the time? He was the minister for finance. Okay. At the time, he yeah, was at the, the time, minister. he was the minister. And, and, and this is under Nkrumah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was at that time that I heard that they were taking people in the military. Military. So I went went to the uh, the exam. We were waiting. I was waiting for the results. I just packed my things. I never told anybody. I never told my father. I never told anybody. I just packed my things, and to military. You didn't tell your brothers. I never. And then when I got there, I nearly ran back. Because you got in there. And your names were already there. Mm -hmm. So you, they call you, we were called officer cadets in those days. Mm -hmm. Officer cadets. So then they would throw boots for you to go and pick up. And you go and it's 110, 19. So you pick it and you, if you are size 9, then you start going looking around for somebody who has size 9, the other side. Yeah, because it's only one too much. Mm -hmm. Then you do exchange. And that, those days were hectic days. Hmm. And uh, So which year would this be? This was 1960, 60, 61, hmm. around about that time. And, Master, the military was a different world. So now you were in the military academy. I've entered the military academy. Mm -hmm. How old were you then? Oh, 38, 60, calculate. So you are 22, you're, you're about 22 that. years. Yes. And you know why they teach you drill? Because mm -hmm. the first thing, you, oh, I can't demonstrate. Otherwise, I would have demonstrated for you to see. You, in, mean you want to demonstrate how you were supposed to walk at age 80? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. All right. You see, you were cadets and be up until you spent six weeks. Mm -hmm. This was how you were supposed to walk. Wherever you are going. 180 paces per minute. Oh. Uh, for real? Wherever you were going. Wherever, I mean, wherever you were going, you, you to were walk to either. walk 180 paces per minute. And what was the point? They are debraining you. And you don't think. They think for you. That's why you go through the drill. Right hand, left hand, about hand, quick man, stop! 
because they are removing all the civilian, we call them dozy ideas from your mind. Mm. And you know why they say do before you complain? Mm -hmm. You me. people said it is do zombie. But why is it that you talk about trust and obey? Trust it's the same obey. thing, turn the other way around. Uh -huh. Trust and obey is the same thing as obey before complain. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you were the brain or, or on brain or real brain. So, so your, your view is different from mine. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying I is that... I will not attempt to go to the military. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is that when they say trust and obey mm. in Christian life, yeah. that is you, you, because you have absolute trust in God, uh, oh, yeah, in Christ. I, I get it so I God it. says move, you move. You don't ask questions. Mm. In the military, is the same thing. Obey before complain. We are in this area, let's say that we, there's going, we are in a war situation where we are sitting here and somebody is on a lookout yeah. watching for the enemy yeah. and he sees somebody raising a gun to shoot. Mm -hmm. Is he going to say, please? He would have lost time. Mm -hmm. All you hear is down. Yeah. What do you do? Obey. You just go down. All right, Jinaho, and wait. Mm -hmm. You go to Asamando and go and get the answer there. Uh, anyway. Yes. So, Captain, yes. we are going to go fast further into yeah, uh, okay. now that you have passed out and entered the military, yes. how things panned out in the military yeah. and how you um, later on became associated with one cool <laughs> after, after, yeah. after another. You are still watching um, The Footprints and we are talking to Captain Joel, so we'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is the footprint, and uh, I've been speaking with Captain Joel. So, and for those of you who just joined us, there's a lot more that we are going to talk about. You have missed, but not, not so much. Now, Captain So is now Captain um, um, a second, second lieutenant. lieutenant who has just come out of the military academy. Now, where did you have your military training? Just in Ghana? In Ghana. In Ghana. Yes. Okay. Then when I came out. Okay. When you came out, you're yes. now commissioned yes. as a second lieutenant. Yes. Where, 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 where was your first posting? That was uh, Reki Regiment. Where is that? Uh, Reki Regiment. That is in Bemakam. In Bemakam. Yes. We okay. use the armored cars. Yeah. So this is, that's our, our, our barracks was called Gonda Barracks. Gonda Barracks. So anybody who hears about Gonda Barracks mm. is Reki Regiment. Oh, nice. But I mean, Gonda Barracks um, was so popular. In my thinking, became popular with, with Jerry Rollins. Right, yes. Um, but that was our With Champon, we knew Arakan Barracks. Yes. And Arakan and Gonda were just opposite we i didn't want to know okay <laughs> i mean right. i mean we we feared these yeah, places they, they, yeah, and they, they, you could only hear it, it, it's, it's in called the, the, the cool hill the cool hill <laughs> yeah so that's just in passing yeah yeah and then we came out and i had to go and do my young officers course in britain okay uh, that is it's called the royal armor Corps center in uh, dorset in, in dorset mm. uh, i went to do that and came back and um when i came back to, uh, i was sent to who to hold mortar regiment? No, recce regiment. We, recce regiment was, uh, one squadron was in Accra, one squadron oh, was in Ho. okay. All right? Okay. So I was in Ho, and then they decided that to shuffle the units around. Then I left Ho and came to Accra. Alpha squadron. Again. Then those who were in Accra, Accra that was Bravo squadron. Mm -hmm. Then they went to you Remember Ho. some of the names? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, in those days, uh, Major Achab. Achab, yeah. Who was uh, Major Achab? You might have heard of Achab. Yeah, yeah. Major Daku. So this will be getting closer to 66. 66 yes. And uh, before 66, I was posted from Reiki. Then I went to, uh, I think around about 64, 65 or so, I, I had to go, I was sent to DQMG. That is Quartermaster General's Department. What's that? They are logistics. They are, in, we are, they are involved in logistics. So I worked directly, I worked under General Kotoka. He was then... He was a, a quartermaster. Yes, he was, he was a, a quartermaster, quartermaster general. Quartermaster general. general. Yes. So head of logistics for Virtually, the... For the whole of the Ghana. And forces. you worked under I him worked, yes. as a young uh, officer. He was the first the quartermaster general. There was a, a major and then I was the third. I was a staff captain Q-Mint. Mm. And what happened was that 
the major went on leave. Mm -hmm. So it means that I had to come Remember back. his name? Oh, Dua Mekpo, Major Dua Mekpo. Dua Mekpo. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had to then combine his duties with my duties. Now then, I had to work directly, directly with, with Kutuka. General Kutuka. Kutuka. Was he general at the time? He, no, he was then, uh, I think, Lieutenant Colonel okay. Kutuka. So now, because of that, mm -hmm. we, the, we became bonded. Familiar with him, yes. Yeah. And so a lot of things happen. I mm -hmm. can't say those outside because there is a, we have a code of conduct. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. I cannot, there are some certain things that I cannot say. I understand. So we were very close. Mm -hmm. Now, I was then a lieutenant, remember. Then, because the workload was very, very heavy, I would close at 1.30, go home, eat, uh, rest for about five, uh, about one hour, then I would come back to the office, close the doors, and do... There were certain letters, you call them directed letters, a letter that he would have directed, because before closing time, a lot of yeah. bombs would have come. So he would have given instructions on, on, on the letters. Then I'll pick all of that. Those that you have to write, I'll write and read. And then I'll send the letter the, to the ops room where we have typist 24 hours. So in the morning when he came to office, Everything things that he has, he has, he has uh, directed me to do, early in the morning by 7.30 or 8, when he got to the office, they were ready for typing. And I didn't know that the man was taking notice mm -hmm. of that. So one night, about 10 o'clock in the evening, 9.30, he came, banged the, the windows, open up, open up. I said, who is that? I said, this is the quartermaster general. He said, is that what you have been doing? I come to the office in the morning, and <laughs> I, I direct, you know, I give instructions on the letters in, by, by 2 p.m. the previous day. Then by... 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, he's done. Uh, you've already worked on all these things. So by 1.30... I saw on the float file, uh, Lieutenant uh, Joel Kwame Sobu was to be given pay of high rank and should be, uh, and also to be given acting rank of a captain. Okay. Recommendation. Right. So that's how I became a captain. Wow. At, at that time. Wow. Then I was posted back to my, to my, Reiki. my, my to Reiki. Who this time? No. Back uh, to Accra. Accra. And then I became the Alpha Squadron Commander. Okay. And also the technical adjutant of the unit and also the sports officer of the unit. Mm -hmm. Keep that at the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Very important. Very important. Well, so now that you are back there, yes. 66, Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Exactly. Who was responsible for the overthrow? And I'm talking about the military. Yes. Uh, let me say that before the 66, from 64, 65, 66, issues in the country, things were not really going on well. Mm -hmm. You know, shortage of food items, you know, things were terrible. And, uh, you know, uh, Kulungugu had happened. You What's know, Kulungugu? Kulungugu, uh, that was when there was an attempt of Kwame Nkrumah's life. Uh, he was he, he was he paid a visit and uh, on the way when he was coming. So he paid a visit to a place yeah. called Kulungu. Yeah, he was no, he was doing a tour of the north. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, at the what time. We to yes. So but he, he present, had to pass is that through present day upper, upper. Yeah, I think upper 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 east. Upper east. Upper east yes. And he had to pass through Kulungu. I mean, it's just like yeah. you are going to Accra, you pass through and Awushi so on, or yeah, something. Okay, okay. So. I believe I was, we were told that it was, it was not even a scheduled stop, okay? It, it wasn't a scheduled stop, but Tawi Adam Afiu and who were his lieutenants, had to make him stop. And there was a small girl who was supposed to present, present a bouquet wow. yeah. or to, to him or something. And then what happened was that there was a, 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 a bomb, a, bomb a, a grenade, a grenade, a grenade. So the, which was thrown, and um, oh, you mean it was in the flowers? It was in a bouquet, or it was thrown at him? Well, what we were told that it was, it was so, in the bouquet. So that the small we girl told. died. Okay, you don't. I, I don't know. Less. I don't want to say anything that I don't know. Mm -hmm. But somebody did a program about it recently. Mm -hmm. The man who was actually there. So. 
all these things and people uh, preventive detention act mm -hmm. you'll be there they knocked on your door call, 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 and you know they suspected that you were going to stage a coup against Kwame Nkrumah and you were arrested and were sent to Usawam. But you were, and that you, was, you were in charge of that. You the military. You were arresting people. And no, but the military officers were also being arrested. By other military officers. No, but then you have the, what you call the military intelligence. That was, that was really very powerful. Mm. And it, they were virtually, you know, Part of separated the, from the, the regular, regular officers. Army. And then you had the presidential own guard regiment, which was they were only to protect the person of Kwame Nkrumah. And you know the constitution at that time said nobody should have a private army. So by extension, Kwame Nkrumah had a, a personal army, which was against the constitution, which a lot of people didn't know. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point in time, Kwame Nkrumah wanted to use the CPP flag as a, to replace the national flag. This a lot of people didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then they were going around the units and asking officers and men to, be, to, to, to become CPP members, to get CPP. And that was, to me, that was the beginning of the downfall of Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the split of the army into pro and, and against. Pro. Because I have an account in a book written by um, a name I, I, I don't recall yes. about um, the position of Okran, General Okran, General Okran at the time. Yes against the politicization of the military. Yes, but he was a member of the National Liberation Council. Well, he then became, yes. later became. Yeah, so did he, did he change his mind? Well, I mean, it, it, had, to, it had to work that way yeah. for him to execute yeah. whatever he thought should be done. Okay. But, but, right. but I'm just saying that... Yeah, this is just in passing. <laughs> just, characterizing yes. the introduction of politics into the military. Yes. But what I'm saying that, that they, they, I'm saying that it was Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah. That was the beginning of politicizing the military by asking these officers and men to become CPP, to hold CPP cards. Mm -hmm. A person like me, I never voted when I was in the army because you entered the army, you were told, don't do politics. Don't have a politician as a friend. Don't do business. Don't have a businessman as a friend. So some of us, we, we just went in there to soldier. Mm. So, and I'm saying that when he, he started, Brigadier Bawa was actually moving from unit to unit. Doing what? Asking people, you know, who trying was, to sensitize us. What was his role at the time? He was the, he was the brigade commander. Okay. And he and was when you close say, to Kwame Nkrumah. When you say brigade commander, what does it mean to the okay, civilian? Okay, brigade commander is, is, is the military. We have various, uh, shall we say, echelons. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have the section. That's about nine people. All right. Then you have a platoon. That's it. We have three sections. Okay. That becomes a platoon. Then three platoons and uh, with uh, will give you a company okay mm -hmm. and three companies will give you a battalion three or four with a, uh, with a company with a uh, hq company that takes care of supernumeraries you understand so that will give you a, comp a, a, a battalion mm -hmm. and so many battalions with, 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 with the supporting arms like the Reiki Regiment, the Mortar Regiment, and other uh, ancillary units added to it gives you a brigade. Then you need a commander to command that. So that was huge. Very huge. Mm -hmm. uh, to be a brigade commander, you had... Good. So General yeah. Bauer would... Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so let's come back yes. to the coup that... Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm saying, I'm giving you the... Well, in fact, I'm virtually telling you the basis for the coup. Yeah. So yeah. things were not really going on well. Yes. Going well. And everybody was complaining. And people were just being arrested left, right, center. Mm -hmm. And in Kwame Nkrumah's own people were also afraid that Kwame Nkrumah would get them arrested. And Kwame Nkrumah decided that there, he was on a peace mission to Hanoi. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, in I, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, yes. To, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Then, uh, <laughs> at the meantime, so uh, Kotoka was then the brigade uh, commander in Kumasi, upper, upper, you know, yeah. the upper echelon, second brigade commander. And 
Afrifa was his brigade major. All right, brigade major is virtually the the, the man who moves the he he is the like right. the adjutant the of the brigade. Yeah, he is the one mm -hmm. with he is the eyes and ears of the commander when he speaks. You understand? So he can. So they were able to organize the truce for the 1966 coup. Okay. So as they were organizing the, and they were going to move. So this is General Kutoka. Kenel Kutoka. Kenel Kutoka. Yes. And, then and Afrifa. Afrifa was which captain? He was, he was a major. A major. He was a time. major. Mm -hmm. So when they moved, they call it Operation Kulchop. I think Operation, yeah, I think Operation Kulchop. At that time, I was talking about Presidential Own Guard Regiment. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were better equipped. They had the best of you, everything, well equipped. Whereas our soldiers had torn uniform. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And this was not, you know, a regular for no. An army, so yeah. and and things were difficult in town. Things were really difficult. Things were chale. Maybe I'm hearing about Bomomingbo. So Bomompi. <laughs> Bomompi. So my I remember my wife's auntie. She was. Uh, women, one of the women organizers of CPP, mm -hmm. and on the twenty third February of February, mm -hmm. I was then on company's commander's course in Teshi. I was resident there. Then she wanted me to pick her to to do something, so I came. And when I pick her, we're in the car and we're going. She was insulting us, insulting soldiers. Are you soldiers? You are just you are plenty of It means that you only eat, you know, banku. You don't do anything. Look at Nigeria; they've stayed the cool nicely. And you people, you are here and you are eating banku, 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 banku. <laughs> and uh, I, I did. I and didn't, she was a CPP woman. CPP woman. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, it gives you that yeah, even the CPP themselves, they wanted something to happen. You, if you read from that, and you see something yeah, in there. We'll so. I didn't say anything. So when 66 happened, I, I, then I went back to Teshi. Four a, four, about 4 a.m. You mean after the coup d'etat? No, before. Oh, uh -huh. That was 23rd. I'm talking about 23rd. 23rd February 66. Yeah. So I went back, slept 24th dawn. The field engineers moved and they started singing the war songs. And they were all, in, you know, they were, we are were, we were military academy. And, the field engineers were just neighbors. Next to each other, yeah. So when they moved, then the news filtered in that the coup was on the way. And you went to join? And I was... Uh, so, uh, I, I, I... By some design, all the officers who were on course rushed to my room to find out what was happening. And you know this excitement, everybody was talking. Yeah. But what they didn't realize was why they were talking, I was dressing up. <laughs> Charlie, I love action. Oh, man. So, we are so cool. I, will lo <laughs> I love action. Look, when Kwame Nkrumah said we we're going to go to Rhodesia, you, remember, uh, you were young, uh, that, uh, he announced when the Rhodesia crisis was on, mm. Ian Smith, I was the first to send my my squadron to military academy for them to do uh, the, examinations and ready because we I, we had the red more fly and everything. We I was prepared. Ready, to, ever I ready. was prepared to move my troops. Yeah. Charlie, I love action. Thank you, and uh, you still love action. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the time they realized, I, I slipped through, entered my car, and I was in Reiki. When I got there, they had moved, and then I saw an armored car, and they said the gun was not working. I jumped into the car, check, check, check the thing, Charlie. The thing was in perfect working order. So I called my driver. I said, he's called, it was called Agbuchi. I said, Agbuchi, are you scared? He said, when, once I'm with you, I don't, I'm, I'm not afraid. Because my ferret, what is written on it is cocksure. Mm -hmm. You understand? Cocksure. So I, when I came, uh, so I moved. The first place I moved to was Flagstaff. So I realized that they had use the H E the sixty uh, uh, the H E gun to break through the side of the of the of the of the gate. So I moved to Broadcasting House. 
Then when I moved to Broadcasting House, I saw the soldiers, instead of eight entering the place, they were all lined up on the, on the, by the walls. And I said, hey, are you supposed to enter and capture the place or you are supposed to be here and get the place? So I cocked my gun. And I said, if you don't move, I'll mow all of you down in a minute. Then I said, don't worry, be afraid. I'm supporting you. Then they moved. Anyway. Into flux, uh, to broadcast house. Them. Then they moved into broadcast. Then I turned around and came. When I to came. To seize yeah? the broadcasting yeah, yeah, house. Yeah. But yeah. no, but you see, they had, Kotoka, apparently, Kotoka had made the announcement. But the, the battalion that are supposed to enter the place and, and, and sit so that nobody comes to take over the yeah. place, they were just. Well, they hadn't, they hadn't experienced it before. Ah, so, so, Charlie, you have to ginger them up to the, mm -hmm. to the thing. So, and at this time, did Kotoka know that you were doing this? No, but he was, I didn't even know. I, I had not even seen the band. So you heard some people were doing cool and you joined? That's me, actually. <laughs> so, so, I came back. Mm -hmm. Came back to uh, 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 Flagstaff House. Then, Flagstaff House, they were still firing there. And then the the the, the, the so this will be the exchanges between the presidential guard, guard and yes and the cool plotters. Right. So the is called oh we used to call him Goldfinger Ken Asari. He, he was then a lieutenant Ken Asari also. He was in charge of second battalion. Mm. Then instructions came that he should tell Ken Zanarigo to tell the POG boy to stop firing. So, Colonel Zanlerigu, at the time... He was the commanding officer of the presidential own regiment. Mm -hmm. And Charlie, everybody feared the man. Yeah. That he had some powers. And truly, if the man stood before you, Charlie, it would be difficult to Is look into his alive? face. No, he's dead. Not too long ago. Huh? Oh, far, so about three, four, five years ago. Yeah. So, then I was around with my ferret. And he said he would not go and tell him. And I said, oh. I would, uh, I, I, I would tell him. So I drove my armored car to his Land Rover, and I said, Sir, uh, you are asked to tell you that you should tell your troops to, to lay down their arms. I will, I, will, I will sit in my armored car. I won't do anything to you. Then he, 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 he you know, the flask of us, there used to be a, 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 a space at the, at the side of the yeah. back here. So he said, I am Kenneth Zanerugu, your commanding officer. Please lay down your arms. Lay down your arms and come out. So finally, to cut a long story short, they came out. And if you meet Colonel Oting, Reverend Colonel Oting, he will tell you he was an officer in the POGR who was in Flagstaff House at that time. Mm -hmm. So he can also give you certain details about what I'm talking about. Okay. Then he came back. So at this point, yes. the coup had succeeded. Yes, yes, it is. So I took um, uh, Colonel Zanarugu, escorted him. Uh, the, these people march out, cannot team march his troops out, and I escort him to flags, to police headquarters. In your... Uh, no, he was in his Land Rover, I was in my ferret. Okay. Now, <laughs> something and interesting I'll, I'll come back to the police headquarters, but yes. at this time, was it Harley who was still head of police? Yeah, and this thing was done in conjunction with the police. The police. So you can see the first announcement that came was that the armed forces in conjunction with, with the police... The police have taken over the reins of government. That was the thing. So okay, so now that they have taken over the reins of government, we'll be taking a short break. Yes. <laughs> this is the footprint, <laughs> and we've been speaking with um, Captain Joel Su, and it's getting interesting. At this point, a young military officer who has... Um, who, who smells coup d'etat and jumps into action and is, is blessed to be alive. And he's still here, and he's 80 years and over, and still counting. Um, but this is the footprint, just walking through the trajectory and the pathways of his life. Maybe a thing or two for us to learn. We'll be right back. Welcome back from our break. Uh, this is the footprint. We've been speaking with Captain Joel Su, and he's been taking us through his life, his time with the, at the military academy and his early days in the military. And we've just, uh, he's just walked us through how the 1966 coup that um, ousted President Kwame Nkrumah or Prime Minister, whichever was president. president Nkrumah at the time in 1966. Um, so, so at this time, where was Nkrumah? 
Yeah, Nkuma actually uh, never returned to Ghana. Uh, I, I, like I said to you, he was in Hanoi. Mm -hmm. From uh, and he was going to make peace there. Be, be peace there, and but, but he had the war behind him. Behind, <laughs> behind him. So uh, he was with people like Kwesi, uh, uh, Ama, Ama, and, uh, and uh, some top top politicians mm -hmm. with that. But unfortunately, most of them deserted him. And then he, when they heard of the coup, when they, when they heard of they the left coup. him around. Actually, he was in Hanoi. He was in Hanoi when the coup took place. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, he, they were having dinner when they uh, in a very diplomatically announced to him that uh, uh, there was a problem in this country. And uh, so that's why he had to leave Hanoi immediately and quickly. So he finally ended up in Guinea, mm -hmm. where Sekuturi, President Sekuturi, decided to make him a co-president of, of, of Guinea. Mm -hmm. And then from Guinea... But uh, Nkrumah's own account would have it that, you know, he had... Uh, 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 a loud welcome in Guinea, Conakry at the time. Yes. And Secretary spoke in French to the massive crowd, and he didn't understand French. It was only after the speech that he realized that he had been made president. Yes, co-president. Co-president. Co -president. Co yeah, that's it. Hmm. So, you, you, if you remember, Kwame, we, we had the uh, Ghana Guinea Mali Union. That's correct. And when Guinea became uh, independent, mm -hmm. uh, Ghana uh, gave Kwame Kuman sent I think ten million pounds pounds at yeah, that time. time. Yeah. So there has been that close collaboration mm -hmm. between Kwame Nkrumah and, and so some of us were not, not surprised about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so from there, but there is something I didn't tell you about the sixty six school. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so popular. Yeah. That then. The, the masses that rushed to the streets, rushed to James Fort, the, all the political prisoners who were, who were... who were It was like a second independence. Virtually. I mean, all the accounts yes, yes. would attest it, to it this was, one. It was, it, was, mm. it was a very popular coup mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. Um, so I needed people to remember mm -hmm. that this was what happened. Okay. You know. Now, when Nkrumah was... Um, in Guinea. In Guinea... Mm. Um, I remember that he made a broadcast. Yes, many. Mm -hmm. Several brokers. Uh, several, several brokers. Which was beamed into Ghana, right? Yes, which was beamed into Ghana and where he was saying that we would hear about him very soon. Mm. And this is also important for you, that he will invade Ghana with, with, with Guinean troops. Okay? He did say that. Yes, that he was going to invade. And this played a very major part for me in 67 when we get there so, so keep this at the back of the yeah mind. so we are actually in 67 because right. Nkrumah would have been in guinea for one year yes as and he had been president. sending various doing various brokers in cashings uh, yeah. sending people into right. various exactly you know and and then and then suddenly yes. sometime in april of um 1967, 1967 yeah you were involved in another coup d'etat 17th april so this time I, you were, yeah. you were. I was not involved in the coup d'état, but by, I again, foiled okay. an attempted coup d'état. So this is the the references made um, of a certain Arthur Yaboa, yes, uh, which is the popular Arthur Yaboa. Left hand, left hand, uh, Samuel Benjamin Arthur, mm -hmm. and uh, Lieutenant Yaboa. Where, where, where was Arthur from? Atta, Atta, Atta is a fanti. A fanti man. A fanti man a doing fanti coup? Man. Uh, he's, a, he's an aparahara. <laughs> Let's not go there. This is 2019. <laughs> this is 2019. <laughs> that could be offensive. <laughs> okay. So is it? But an I am an aparagoma. Aparagoma. He is an aparahara. Yeah, those were popular terminologies in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> Yeah, so, so Arthur yes. Yeboa. And uh, one lieutenant, second lieutenant, Poku. Poku. Yes. And they were all from the Reki Regiment? Yes. They were Reki Regiment, Bravo, uh, Bravo Squadron, Squadron, Reki Regiment, Ho, stationed at Ho. So they were stationed at Ho? Yes. And they decided to do the coup and everything? Uh, yes. And we are told that on the day of the, of the coup d'etat, Yes, they of the attempted coup. Attempted coup. Yes. They started marching from Ho. Yes, yeah, they, they came all the way uh, from, from Ho to 
um, uh, Shy Hills. Uh -huh. And we were, from our various accounts we got to know later on, it was, in fact, apparently, Yebwa and uh, Poku, second left and Poku, apparently from the accounts we, 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 got, we, we, we got, they didn't even know that they were coming to stage a coup. Oh. The but other hang on, deceived hang them. On. So after Nkrumah, when uh, Kotoka led the coup d'etat yes. with uh, Free Fire, right? Yes. Um, who became the head of state and under which General, the General Ankara. Ankara. Lieutenant uh -huh. General Ankara became... So why? Because he wasn't involved in the coup. Right. The, 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 when, he, he, when you're going to stage a coup d'etat, now you, are, you have to pay me consultancy for this one. No, for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> in a situation where a group of people want to stage a coup d'etat, for security reasons, it will be difficult to say, you, when we succeed, you become minister for so so and so, this will be the head of state or this will be, because if that thing got into the hands of, uh, you know, the authorities, you might be in trouble. So it, it was difficult to even pinpoint one person and say, you will be the leader. Now, so what happens is that when it happened, they had to look for somebody who is popular, mm -hmm. who can resonate with the, with, with the Ghanaians, mm -hmm. with the population. And the military as well. Yes. So that then... But Kotoka, Kotoka then, was not... Kotoka was, was virtually... Yeah, Kotoka was a lay-by okay. in the military. Uh, a, a lot of... He, he was not a social type. He didn't socialize... So much with, but I hear he was very respected, very disciplined, respected, and you know, when mm -hmm. Finchim, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I worked under him, so That's I knew correct. the guy. But at heart, he was a very good person. Good. So, General Ankara, where was he at the time? Who was he? he had been dismissed. Lieutenant General Ankara was yes, was the deputy chief of defense staff under Otu. Who was the chief of defense staff? At that time, Kwame Nkrumah was playing divide and rule with them. We were told Kwame Nkrumah would invite uh, 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 the chief of defense staff to his office. Mm -hmm. And while talking to the chief of defense staff, he would have asked them to tell the deputy chief of defense staff, Ankara, to come. And he would arrange the thing in such a way that as the, 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 the chief of defense staff was leaving Nkrumah's office, Ankara they have Ankara. asked Ankara also to go. So they would have bypassed one another, each other, mm -hmm. whilst going. So this one said, eh, so you've gone to make a concern about me. Mm -hmm. This one too would think that, oh, so they are calling you to come and make a concern about me. You, you understand? Yeah. So there was bad blood between the two of them. So at the end of the day, Kwame Nkrumah dismissed the two of them. Oh, okay. And Ankara was also very popular with, with the soldiers. And a lot of people empathized with him. Okay. So I think Kukufuka and Ko also realized that, ah, this okay. is the right a person choice. to to to. All right. Ask so Ankara would then become the head of state of, after. Of the, okay. Uh, so so the Arthur of and Yabua was, were going to overthrow Ankara. Is that correct? Yes. The, the NLC. Uh, the National Liberating Council. Okay, which was led by Ankara. Ankara, yes. So they were going to overthrow them. Yes. And where did you come in? Right. So this is a, it's going to be a long story. A, okay, uh, the story mm -hmm. of um, Arthur, Yeboa, and, and did you shoot them? No, I didn't. So who shot them? I thought you said when we come back next time. Yeah, but this is a yes or yeah. no question. So No. So you did not? I did not shoot them. But who did? Oh, you are going into the story. So <laughs> now I take over from you. So okay, listeners, so, so uh, watchers. <laughs> Let uh, me come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so, so now that we know about this uh, coup d'etat, which was attempted by um, officers from the Reki regiment uh, from Ho, um, driving all the way from Ho to, to Accra to come and overthrow uh, General Ankara, 
and this coup d'etat was foiled. And um, some way, somehow, once again, Captain Sowu found himself very close to the action. But for this episode of this program, this is where we like to draw the curtains. Um, many thanks for watching. This is The Footprint. My name is Samola Tamensa. Same time next week, just make a date with us.